I now ask uh, Chris Beattie to just give a, a further situation update <coughs> and he and, and uh, I and the, the two ministers uh, will be available to answer any of your questions. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, um, well, as the Premier said, it's been a uh, tremendously busy period for emergency services staff and volunteers over the last 36 hours. Um, we've exceeded 850 odd calls for assistance over that period and the uh, uh, truth of the matter is that South Australia can be uh, rightly proud of the uh, efforts of the volunteers, particularly the SES and CFS volunteers who work throughout the night to protect uh, lives and property. The actions of uh, MFS crew, um, and particularly in the uh, south coast areas, actually undertook um, significant works that mitigated potential damage to a number of properties. We did see uh, a significant concentration of uh, flood impacts in a number of areas, including Oldgate, uh, Torrance Park, uh, Waterfall Gully, uh, Forestville, Hawthorne and Old Norlunga. And in those areas there were a number of properties uh, that were inundated and we saw also damage to road infrastructure. Throughout the course of the event, there were a number of other uh, impacts, including the uh, uh, impact down at Rapid Bay, where for a short period of time, the, uh, the school was uh, isolated by floodwaters, and uh, the old Norlunga Primary School that was impacted uh, in the lower Onkapringa catchment uh, when the floodwaters uh, rose, and uh, remains closed today. The, um, the impacts uh, across the um, state have uh, primarily been related to trees down, storm damage and, and flood inundation on about a one-third uh, basis. We currently have a number of uh, flood warnings that remain in place. We're continuing to keep a close eye on the, uh, the Gawler River which is at a minor flood warning level. We also have generalised flood warnings in place for the Angus and the Bremer rivers. The, uh, the lower Onkaparinga River remains at a moderate um, uh, level and that's uh, dropping which is uh, commensurate with the reduction in, in rains. Um, moving forward, the uh, State Emergency Service Control Centre and Regional Coordination Facilities remain open and the State Emergency Centre remains on standby and we're starting to think about our contingency plans for Saturday and into next week as the uh, uh, weather returns. Um, again, I want to reinforce some of the key messages that the, uh, the Premier made in relation to staying safe during these uh, operational conditions. It's really important that people don't drive through floodwaters. Uh, only this morning there are reports out of Victoria of an unfortunate uh, case of um, an uh, individual being swept uh, down a stream in his vehicle and uh, authorities are yet to locate that individual but again it just highlights the risk of driving through floodwaters. We can't see or ascertain the uh, actual structure of the road and whether there's been any damage. Also, I want to really encourage uh, people to avoid uh, walk, uh, working, uh, playing or wading through floodwaters if they can. They can be contaminated with uh, sewage and other uh, contaminants and this uh, exacerbates the uh, risk of infections and other medical conditions. Um, if your house has been uh, inundated, there are a number of good materials available on the uh, SES website, on the sa.gov.au website as well that can provide guidance as to how best to approach the clean-up. It's really important that if it's been impacted by floodwaters that you do get a licensed electrical contractor in to ensure that your electrics are safe and your appliances are safe. And finally, uh, as we move into the weekend with another day of, uh, of rain over Saturday and again next week, I just remind the community to be vigilant uh, of the, uh, the risk environment. Uh, take this opportunity over the next couple of days to prepare your property if you feel that you may be at risk. But again, stay tuned to the weather forecasts and uh, messages and advice from the authorities. How many homes had to be evacuated? So last night we um, evacuated uh, homes in a number of locations. The most significant amount of work was undertaken in the old Norlunga area, in the uh, lower Onkapringa catchment, where we door knocked 75 residents that we uh, were either at risk or um, were inundated from the flooding. And uh, were there further evacuations elsewhere? Uh, following that, no, there weren't. Um, can you give us an update with regards to, to sandbag methods, particularly in the south? Um, were there <coughs> enough sandbags on hand to hand the demand for, for them? Yeah, so we had uh, sandbags distributed prior to and during the event from a number of depots uh, around the state. We also had sandbags deployed at Ford Command Post where we had localised flooding. In the uh, lower Onkapringa area, there were uh, sufficient sandbags that were provided by the Nolonga uh, SES and through state stocks, and we also had sand provided through council support. Um, we, we, we've had suggestions, though, that, uh, that people in the south were turned away because sandbags had run out 
and emergency crews were unprepared for the flooding that was uh, was coming. I'm not aware of those reports. Is it just 80 homes across the state that were inundated? It's a really difficult uh, number to gauge. Uh, one of the challenges is that during the height of a, a big event like this, there are many jobs that are being tended to by uh, crews from across the emergency services. Uh, we do attempt to collate the data as best we can and we do attempt to do a uh, impact assessment uh, following the, um, uh, I guess, the height of the event. And indeed we've got crews out now just uh, trying to reconfirm the damage. We do know that at least 80 homes were uh, inundated or impacted, but it's also true to say that there are probably very many homes uh, around the state that have had uh, water damage, where those residents have self-helped, cleaned up and either got their insurer or builder in and looked after themselves, and we won't know anything about those homes. So just to clarify on the, on the sandbag issue, you're, you're satisfied that the SES was as prepared as it could have been for yesterday's event? Yeah, we have uh, strategic sandbag stocks around the state and uh, held at local units and uh, I'm confident there was sufficient sandbags for this event. What are the main infrastructure issues currently? Obviously we saw the pictures of, the, of Montacute Road um, buckled and sort of fallen apart. Are there other major issues that you're currently addressing? The, uh, probably the key concern for the community is the road closures. There continues to be around 39 uh, roads closed. Uh, that changes um, minute by minute. Um, I'd encourage people to check the traffic.sa.gov.au website for updates. In terms of other infrastructure, it's clear that there has been road damage uh, in places. Um, those roads are owned by councils and, and state government and obviously there will be assessments undertaken by those authorities as to what needs to be done to repair them. We're also advised at the uh, briefing of the Emergency Management Council that uh, SA Water are doing some work in relation to some uh, infrastructure damage associated with some of their um, sewage infrastructure. How, how are your volunteers coping, Chris? Uh, long term, given that this has been a really flat out year for the SES particularly, <clears throat> are you finding volunteers dropping away? Are they still available? Do you need more? Where's it at? Look, it's fair to say it's been a, a tough winter. Um, since May we seem to have had front after front after front and each of those has brought with it many hundreds if not thousands of, of jobs. Um, so our volunteers, though, uh, you know, are always there to assist the community in times of need, but it's fair to say that after the last 36 hours they are tired. They'll be looking forward to a well-earned rest, but we'll be getting them focused again for next week so that uh, we'll have the crews in place uh, should they be needed.